What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafter Workshop video. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I basically pimped my X-Carve. So the X-Carve is a great platform for learning CNC, for kind of getting into it, dipping your toes in the waters. But I know this year I wanna do some more kind of interesting and intense stuff on the X-Carve. And because of that, I wanted to add some upgrades. First of which is this beautiful T-Track from Rockler. It's gonna allow me to use all of their T-Track accessories for things like work holding and fixturing. Then I also added some other aftermarket upgrades which raised the gantry to allow me to put thicker pieces on the X-Carve and also completely replaced the Z-axis which is gonna allow me a lot more up and down travel to cut into those thicker pieces. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. I had a lot of fun with this and I'm really excited to put all of these upgrades to work here in the near future. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. This whole project started because the spoil board on my X-Carve was getting pretty beat up. So when I first started using the machine, I wasn't really concerned with precision when it came to entering the thickness of the things I was cutting. And because of that, I ended up with my spoil board looking like it had been in battle. So now the obvious solution was just to flatten the spoil board and get it looking fresh again, but this posed a bit of a problem. Because you see, the spoil board on the X-Carve is bigger than its cutting area. So skimming off an eighth of an inch would cause there to be a sunken area in the middle of the spoil board with the edges still their original thickness. And this isn't a problem most of the time, but if I wanted to hang a piece off the front or back of the X-Carve while cutting, which I've definitely done before, this would no longer be possible. So I knew that as part of this project, I wanted to improve the X-Carve's work holding capabilities anyway, so I figured adding some MDF strips on top of the existing spoil board with T-Track running between those strips would be kind of the perfect solution. The added strips would raise the workpiece so that I could hang pieces off the front if I needed to, and the T-Track would allow a ton of options for fixturing and work holding. To accomplish this, I cut some strips of scrap MDF over the table saw, making sure to leave them plenty oversized so that I could trim them to final size on the X-Carve, and then I marked hole locations which lined up with the threaded inserts on the X-Carve spoil board. I wanted these strips to be easily replaceable if and when they get damaged, and using the inserts to attach the strips was kind of the perfect solution. I drilled some recessed holes at the drill press, first recessing the hole with a Forstner bit, and then coming back with a twist bit to drill the through hole. And I originally only drilled two holes at each end of the strips, but I ended up coming back and adding two more holes at the center of the strips as well, just to keep them flat on the spoil board. To attach the strips to the spoil board itself, I used these pan head machine screws, and having the holes in the strips lined up with the threaded inserts made the insulation process super quick. I just drove in the screws with a drill. As you can see, the slots between the strips were way too small for the T-Track at this point, but again, that was on purpose because I wanted to cut those slots to fit. So the next step was to widen those slots, which I really took my time with as I wanted a nice tight fit with the T-Track. And I initially made extremely shallow passes until I got a basically perfect fit and any of those shallow passes that were too wide were cleaned up when I surfaced the strips later on. After getting the fit just right, I ran the full operation, making sure I really dialed in my depth so the bit didn't dig into the fresh spoil board. Next, I needed to square up the front and back edges of the strips, and it's a good idea to make absolutely sure your gantry is perfectly square before performing an operation like this. I like to use a spacer on each side of the rail, pulling it snug against both spacers, and this locks it into place and confirms that the gantry isn't at a square. So with the gantry square, I squared up the front and back edges of the strips and then surfaced the strips to get them perfectly flat. While the X-Carve is working, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, FilterBuy. So air filters are one of those household things that I find myself forgetting to replace, even with reminders. My Nest thermostat even reminds me to change the filters every couple of months, but it's really easy to miss digital notifications these days. That's why a service like FilterBuy is really perfect for me, since it allows me to have high quality air filters delivered to my doorstep as often as I'd like. It's a whole lot harder to forget to install those new air filters when they're sitting on your kitchen counter. So with over 600 filter sizes in stock, filter buy is sure to have you covered too. And by signing up for auto delivery, you can save an extra 5%. Plus, filter buy has free shipping on every order. Another great thing about filter buy is they can custom make filters for almost any weird or hard to find size you might need. And since filter buy's factory is located in Talladega, Alabama, it means your new filters will arrive at your doorstep quickly. So, to learn more about filter buy and to get signed up, check out the link in the video description below. And thanks again to filter buy for sponsoring this week's video. The last bit of work on these strips was to add some lines to indicate where each inch of surface area was, 
and this also will help to line things up quickly in the future when I'm clamping material to the spoil board. And this was a tip I picked up from my buddy Jay Bates's recent CNC videos, which have been super informative, and I'll add a card so you can check that video out. Next, I could get the T-Track installed and try out some of these clamps, and that's where I discovered I had a bit of an issue. All right, so everything was going pretty smoothly until I got to this point. So basically the whole point of adding all of this additional MDF was going to be to add these T-Tracks so that I could then use clamps that ran on T-Tracks. And so when I went to first try out this Rockler T-Track kind of side hold down clamp, I noticed it's not gonna clear the Z plate. And so that's obviously a problem. The other issue is that by adding this additional MDF, I'm basically further limited in the thickness of material I can use. I think I've only got about an inch and three quarter of clearance here now. So I kind of went back to the drawing board and started looking at some other options and found basically a plethora of upgrades to the X-Carve out there. And someone across one particular company, TBD CNC, Luke over there makes some really cool options for the X-Carve. So I'm gonna be installing some of those here instead so that I can then raise that kind of Y carriage and add a whole lot more clearance as well as adding some other stuff. So let's go ahead and get into that now. The first step before installing these new upgrades was to remove those strips I had just finished installing and the spoil board, but luckily these were really easy to remove and could be reused later on. The first upgrade item I installed were these riser plates, which raise the Y axis rails two inches and also provide some extra clearance for the dust boot. The risers also come with new beefier bolts which just reduce the likelihood of stripping these bolts later on. I added the riser plate at the front, only attaching the bottom two bolts to start, and then repeated the process at the back, and I made sure to prop up the rail just to keep the gantry from getting tweaked during this process, and I could then lift the rail up and install the top two bolts at each end of the rail, and then I just repeated this whole process on the other side of the X-carve in the exact same way. Next, I could install these stiffeners, which connect the base extrusion to the Y-axis rails and keep them from flexing under heavy load. And these just attach with a few T-nuts, but you do need to remove the base rails to insert these T-nuts. Each stiffener has one bolt at the bottom and two at the top, and I used four stiffeners per side, which resulted in an incredibly stiff Y-axis rail. The next upgrade to work on was this new Supergrade Z-axis from TBD CNC. And this replacement Z-axis runs on linear rails, meaning it's super precise, and it gives you six inches of Z-axis travel versus the two and a half inches of stock travel. This will allow me to cut much thicker pieces on the X-Carve, and it'll also allow cutting much deeper operations into those or on those pieces. The upgrade is pretty simple and really just kind of drops into place and reuses a lot of the stock parts from the X-Carve. One other thing I did add to the Supergrade that wasn't stock was this more robust 15 millimeter belt, which will give the Z-axis a little bit more oomph and stability under heavy load. Finally, I could get the router mounting plate reinstalled on the Z-axis, which just mounts with a few bolts. In order to reinstall the spoil board, I needed to trim down its width slightly, taking about an eighth of an inch off of each side, and this just allowed the spoil board to fit between those new stiffener plates and I did have to re-drill the mounting holes on the two sides of the spoil board to accommodate this slightly narrower width. Next, I reinstalled the MDF strips, making sure they were in the same orientation as when I removed them, and then I could start working on getting the Rockler T-Track installed. So the first thing I needed to do was trim the T-Track, which comes in one foot increments down to a length of 29 and a half inches. And I made sure to remove some material from both ends to ensure I had a screw hole at each end of the T-Track sections. After cutting, I was left with some pretty sharp edges on the T-Track, so I sanded down those areas with my belt grinder, but again, a simpler solution would just be a file. To install the T-Track, I positioned it flush with the ends of the strips, pre-drilled the holes using a self-centering bit, and drove in some 5 8 inch long screws to hold it down. I added some double-sided tape to the first few pieces of T-Track, thinking it might improve the holding power, but I decided about halfway through this probably wasn't necessary. All right, in the home stretch now as far as upgrades. So next on the list was an upgraded belt system, again from TBD CNC. And I first needed to remove the existing belts and clips that came with the X-Carve, as well as swap out the idler rollers to accept these bigger belts. The belt kit comes with new, stronger clips and installed just like the original X-Carve belts did. And these more robust belts should keep the X-Carve more rigid when it's cutting aggressively, and since they're beefier, they'll be less likely to break, although that isn't an issue I've had on the X-Carve. 
The last upgrade to install on the X-Carve itself was this new dust shoe called the Magna Boot, made by Yellowbox Shed. This dust shoe is entirely 3D printed, which I think is super cool, and the height is easily adjustable by moving the shoe up or down one level on the rare earth magnets that hold it in place. The Magna Boot also utilizes 4-inch flex hose, which provides a ton more suction than the stock dust boot, and I was able to rig the boom arm that came with my X-Carve for use with this 4-inch hose. So with the upgrades to the X-Carve done, I figured I'd finish things up by adding some better storage to the stand that my X-Carve lives on, which is just a Rockler shop stand with two layers of OSB on top. To organize the plethora of T-Track accessories, I added two of these T-Track racks to the side of the table. So with all that done, I could finally fire up the X-Carve for the first time since adding all these upgrades and make sure I reinstalled everything correctly. So before homing the machine, I needed to update the step value for the Y-axis since a completely new unit. Once that was finished, I could home the machine and everything seemed to be working right, which was super exciting. So before actually cutting anything, I needed to recalibrate all three axes to account for these new belt sizes. This is a fairly simple process and there are some really great videos out there on how this is done, which I'll link to in the video description, but you basically just give the X-Carve a set distance to travel, measure the distance it actually traveled, and then enter that new value in the machine inspector section of Easel. And with all that done, it was finally time to get to cutting. To do these test cuts, I switched over to this quarter inch compression bit from Infinity Tools, and I'm a big fan of compression bits on the CNC as they're basically a combination of an upcut and downcut spiral bit and usually leave a really great surface finish. So I got a scrap piece of plywood clamped down, zeroed the machine, and set up a simple operation which would cut a circle, starting at about 100 inches per minute, cutting 0.1 inches on each pass. And here's the cut in real time just to show you how quick it's going. So after the cut finished up, I checked out the piece and was left with a basically perfect cut, so I decided to bump the feed rate up to 120 inches per minute and the depth of cut up to about an eighth of an inch. Once again, the machine had no trouble with this and cut very smoothly, and I was left with a pretty much perfect cut. The last test was to ensure the machine would still cut squarely at these increased speeds, and I confirmed that by cutting a small square and checking it with a square. So with the testing done, I could finally call this project complete. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Even if you might not have your own CNC, hopefully this will kind of put some things in your head in case one day you do add a CNC to your shop. I really think it's a tool that pretty much any shop could use. Uh, they're a great way to make the same product over and over again, great for batching and things like that. And that's where a lot of this work holding and fixturing really comes into a play and just kind of allows you to use the same setup over and over, not really having to mess with the software side. And that allows you to get a ton of efficiency out of these machines. Again, I really think the X-Carve is a great platform to start on. Their free software easel is really easy to learn. They've got great customer support. Uh, I'm just a big fan of Inventables in general. So if you guys are at all interested in adding one of their machines to your workshop, I'll have affiliate links to both the X-Carve and Easel down in the video description below. Also in the video description below, I'll have links to all the other upgrades I added, any tools and materials I might have used on this project, that kind of thing. Also, if it's your first time to the channel, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this one pretty much every week. Also, ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And last, I have added that YouTube membership functionality in case you guys want to help support me and get some kind of behind the scenes content. I'll have a link to that somewhere on the screen as well. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and until next time, Happy building.